Philosophers of science and scientists have been arguing for centuries on whether scientific knowledge is acquired by inductive and empirical methods or by deductive, rational methods. Of course, as everything in life, the middle term is the best answer. A combination of inductivism and deductivism and other ways of reasoning is what scientists use today in order to develop theories and produce scientific knowledge. But let's start with the tension between the inductive empiricism and deductive rationalism at the beginning of the scientific revolution with the views of Francis Bacon and René Descartes. Francis Bacon wrote the Novum Organum in 1620. The title of his book, Novum Organum, is in reference to the organum, which is the method that Aristotle developed in ancient Greece. In this book, he proposed that mind is an obstacle for knowledge. So, he mentioned uh, in a poetic way four idols of the mind, which we would call today biases of the mind. By idols of the tribe, he meant these biases that us a species we humans have. For example, a tendency uh, to find patterns in nature where things are random. By idols of the cave, he referred to the individual experience and the individual education one receives and biases our way of thinking about nature. By idols of the theater, he was referring to the stories of philosophers that um, influence our way of thinking about nature. And the idols of the marketplace are these ideas that we acquire by communication. He was referring to specific words that we acquire in the communication and they are not very useful to try to understand nature. So what does he propose in order to overcome the biases of the mind or the idols of the mind? He proposed the method. By following a method we will overcome the biases of the mind. And the method started with a broad um, collection of data without presuppositions, no hypothesis at this stage. At the second stage, we need to analyze the data to detect patterns, correlations. And only after these broad and um, an a theoretical collection of data, we need to start to ex execute experiments to test the possible correlations that we detected in our previous stage. Then we generate hypotheses and we further test those hypotheses. And then, if those hypotheses are confirmed, we elevate these hypotheses to laws of nature. This is the inductive method. We start with data and by a continuous process of hypotheses, testing and experimentation, we elevate those data, these observations into laws. Induction is this process of coming from uh, cases, observations to laws, to generalities. But em the empirical aspect of Francis Bacon's method is that we need to acquire this knowledge through our senses. And the mind is an obstacle that we can only overcome through use of an, an objective method. Now, a very different view is the one that René Descartes proposed in his Discourse on Method in 1637. He proposed that the only way of obtaining certain knowledge is through the mind, not the senses. 
Remember the evil demon of the cards, this evil demon that may deceive us and present to our mind things that are not true. So the card says that we only can use deductive reasoning to generate knowledge. Deductive reasoning comes from the use of rational and axiomatic analysis. And we can only start this process by accepting as true only what presents itself with clarity to our minds, not the senses. And then we divide the problem and find solutions to these simple problems first and then the difficult problems. And finally, to test the general solution with persistence. Persistence is uh, here repetition. For Descartes, mathematics was the quintessential way of doing science. For example, we've got a law that says that tri the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So, if we know that a triangle has uh, two angles that the sum of which is 100 degrees, then we don't need to observe anything in nature. We know by a fact that the third angle is 80 degrees because they must, the, the sum of the angles must be 180. That's the way he views science. We start with laws, axioms, and then we make deductions, not by making observations in nature. For Bacon, observation and experimentation is the key, and mathematics is secondary or, or tertiary. Bacon was against speculation. Descartes says that the only way we can achieve certain knowledge is by deduction. Now, Isaac Newton in his Principia Mathematica, in 1687, he proposed also an axiomatic method. It's more on the side of Descartes with uh, deduction. Knowledge is acquired by deduction. He proposes that a theory must have premises, postulates, that are known to be true or assumed to be true. An assumption here is very important because Sometimes we don't know if it is true, but we make the assumption that is true and based on that assumption we can make deductions and make predictions and we can test those predictions. One way that is not deduction or induction that Isaac Newton used and is very frequently used today is the abstraction of a problem to a simplest form. For example, he, in order to understand the trajectory of the planets, he imagined a mass as a single point moving around an abstract center of force. And so that point, this point particle, trying to move, but at the same time being attracted by that center of force. And the combination of these two forces, the movement of the particle and the attraction of that center of force, is what produces a trajectory that is elliptical. So here we have the view of induction and empirical method and the tradition of rational and deductive method.